Hello, welcome to LEV Toys. Okay, it's time to keep building the rest of the Lego elves break out from the Goblin King's fortress. This is so cool. We're up to bag number four and we're up to the second level of the fortress. And there are lots of little tricks and traps in here, but we've already built Cronin, who's the Goblin King, and we're up to the part where he actually would have come out of bag number four, but I pinched him out earlier. So now he gets his, his great big staff and he gets a key which is very important for locking up whoever he's going to put up in the cage, which we're going to build very, very soon. I know because I've seen it in the pictures. So we're going to keep building up here and we're going to see what else happens on the second level while Cronin stands here and does nothing and just holds his key and is basically no help at all. But we're putting some of the, well, these spiky things on the front, on the front of the fortress. So kind of fortifications on the fortress and that's going to stop anybody from being able to climb up and over them because they will get big spikes in their bottoms if they try and climb on them. And a matching green diamond over here. And now we're working back over on this other little level. Oh, and this is where the portal is going to be. The portal that he's trying to open to Earth so that the shadow creatures can go through and conquer Earth. And Cronin, I assume, wants to go as well. Has, have you seen the new Lego Elves on Netflix? It just looks fantastic in its new form. And the story is so great. I really enjoyed watching it. And there are so many ways that we can play with this fortress with either the story that goes with the actual Lego Elves series or whatever you want to make up. You can capture whoever he likes. You can go through the portal to wherever you want to go. So we'll finish building it and then we will definitely play with it and we've got some black thorns over here that's where the amulets are going to go and here is our big horrible looking portal <laughs> we're moving away from that because we need to keep building down here this is going to be uh, I think this is going to go over the top of the portal very nice and there are some more of those green crystals up there that he's been harvesting from the forest uh, and causing such damage to the forest while he's been doing that. And here is a big satchel with a, a big hammer and another one of those crystals. So he's got enough of them now, it looks like, to be able to actually power the portal. All he needs now is Emily Jones' amulet and then he can get started. He can bring his mother back to life, or he thinks he can. And he can open up the portal for the shadow creatures. It's all very exciting. We're putting some more pointy, spiky things up here on the battlements and it looks so so good best fortress ever <laughs> definitely a spiky pointy thing right in the middle and we've got oh that looks really great that kind of horns up around oh no they're not gonna be horns they're gonna be branches with more spikes on them with red thorns There, that looks ominous, doesn't it? Okay, we're up to bag number five and Cronin is gonna stand over here near the portal. No, he's not, he's coming back down near the bottom and we're going to make, it looks like, some more chompy plants. We're going to need lots, <laughs> lots and lots of chompy plants here, do we? Oh, look at that, it's a chompy plant. It's for chomping up the goblins or for chomping up Sophie or not. We'll put, put them all away safely where they can't be chomped up. And uh, did you notice that I put that on the wrong way around? There we go. Now the teeth all face inwards, so that will be much more effective when the plant wants to chomp on somebody. It's not going to work very well if the teeth are pointing downwards. <laughs> Okie dokie, we've got more here. This is just going so well. This is going to be, oh, a little catapult. So this goes up here in the middle and it's on a spinny thing. So we can catapult huh, Tufflin down here into the man-eating plants. <laughs> so it's, this is a very dangerous spot to stand. So you could fall into these man-eating plants or you could be catapulted off the top of the fortress. <laughs> Some exciting ways to use this. And we just put a door frame in, which is kind of weird. So I wonder where that's leading to. I suppose we will find out as we keep building, won't we? And the shadow creature over there, the shadow raven is keeping an eye on what we're all doing. It looks very evil and very creepy. Now inside we've got We've got a feather, so we've got a quill, so it might be a writing desk. Kind of, it's not really a desk, is it? Mm. 
Well, we've roofed this and now we get to put, oh, these look awesome. Big blue climbing vines oh, around the around the fortress. And another one up here, this one's going to be extended and it actually is trying to creep in through the window. So you could actually climb up those if you wanted to, if you were willing to take a chance to come all the way to the top here where Cronin's throne room is going to be. Fantastic. In fact, speaking of throne room, I think, judging by all these colors, we might be about to build Cronin's throne. Let's see what the throne of an even evil, evil, <laughs> even, even evil goblin king looks like. He's evenly evil. He's even eviler than Regana. Is he though? Is he eviler than Regana? I don't know. This is definitely a throne. Yes, he's definitely eviler than Regana. Maybe. What do you think? You'll have to tell me. This is actually looking kind of like a little robot at the moment. <laughs> it's cute. Okay, robot eyes have gone away, so not quite so cute. Definitely now looking like a throne for an even evil goblin king. And we're smoothing over the back. And some more red thorns on the top because if it didn't have thorns, oh, down here too. Hopefully they don't catch on his cape when he sits down. Oh, and some little ones on the front. Oh, that looks perfect. That's perfect. Wee! Oh, look, Sophie's here. She wants to try out the throne. Uh, might want to hop off that and run away because here comes Cronin. Yes, he's very pleased with his throne. And yes, the thorns are perfectly situated so they don't spike him when he sits down. So we'll take it up here and it's actually going to be installed on this turny part on a revolving circle. Look at that. So fantastic, but we're not finished quite with it yet because we've got a branch that's going to stick off the side Look at that. And are we going to put some foliage on that branch? We've definitely got some nice thorny foliage here. No, it goes on the other branch. Okay, so on the big one, we'll just move Tufflin out of the way. On the big one, we are going to hang, yes, the cage. This should be almost impossible to get out of because it's going to be hanging in the air. And this is cool. We're actually using spears as the opening part for the door. Oh, I love the designs for the elves. They're just ingenious. So that goes on there. Fantastic. So that's how the prisoners are going to get in or out. So we'll just put Sophie in here and she's ready, except we just need to put the lock on. So let's do that. And now she's locked in. Mm, we can try using the key, but apparently the key by itself doesn't work. So that's not going to do her any good at all. Let's put her up here and hang her from this big branch. And now she is in Cronin's sight and hanging up here where nobody can rescue her. <laughs> and when he swivels around to try and look at her, then the cage goes to the back. <laughs> it's pretty cool though. Okay, what else have we got to do? Oh, we've just got to do a little bit more of the fortifications around the front of his throne room. So some more of these little spiky things. We need another one on the other side. Lovely. And they got the big tall thorns on the side as well, which kind of bend in. They're kind of rubbery and they kind of bend in and they look like, it looks like a big, big teeth with enormous fangs on the side. Oh, and a fancy book where with the, oh, okay. So that's, these are the instructions that he writes out for the goblins so that the goblins know what they're doing. So this is going to go, I think, up in his, up near where we had the quill before, do you remember? And now we've got some more of these little evil plant seeds for the man-eating plants. And we're gonna find out where all of these go now. So we'll take the fortifications up first and we will install them in front of the throne room and finish off the throne room. Spectacular, that's fantastic. Oh, so good. And below the throne room is his little tiny writing room. 
and that's where the book is supposed to go behind that that perspex that stand there kind of so it goes like that oh all right so that's where he writes his missives for the goblins and we need the evil plant seeds which can also be used to <laughs> they can be propelled through the air and we can actually we can use them to try and yeah knock out anybody who's trying to break into the castle so we're all done look at that Oh, this is cool. Is it as cool as Regana's castle? It kind of is, and it's, it, it's, it's different enough that they can both be cool and evil. I really like this. We've got the portal here, which we're going to play with in a minute. And we've got the cage up here. Sophie's already trapped in it. Cronin's having a lovely time there on his throne. We've got, we've got so many good things. I love the vines wrapping around on the left-hand side there. And the chompy plants down the front, which will stop anybody from being able to climb up anyway. And of course, we've got the drawbridge, which you can wind up and down and try and keep people out. However, there is, of course, the secret door around the side. So you can just bypass the, bypass the drawbridge and you can go through the secret door. Or you can just go around the back because it's all entirely open too. So the fortress is entirely built. I think we might tell a little story with this, but we're not going to tell it quite the same way as they do in the Lego Elves <laughs> story. So currently Sophie is being poked along here by by Tufflin and he's trying to knock on the drawbridge but nobody's letting it down. All the other goblins must be out for their tea break so he's just poked Sophie and told her she needs to stay still while he opens this up and now he's gonna poke her up the drawbridge. There we go. Inside and now she is trapped in the cage and Cronin is not quite as pleased as he should be because he's got the wrong round-eared person so she doesn't have the amulet so he's sending the Shadow Raven off to find Sophie. No, to find Emily, because we've already found Sophie. <laughs> of course. Okay, but maybe the Shadow Raven doesn't need to find Emily at all, because Emily is coming along in here, and she seems to be equipped for breaking in to the Goblin King's Fortress. So she's she's got a big line up here, and she's going to try and get that key. Let's see. <gasps> she's got it. Lucky Cronin's wandered off. Where did Cronin go? I don't know. I can still see Tufflin there, though. So she's going to have to be careful. She's climbing up the grapple, uh, up over those pointy bits, and she's got the key, though, so she might be able to break Sophie up, but she can't because it's a magical lock. So this isn't going to work at all. Oh, no, she's going to make a bargain with Cronin. He wants her amulet so he can open up the portal, and she's giving it to him. Oh, no. No, Emily, what are you doing? This is a bad idea. <gasps> the portal is busy pulsating and it's open now. And the Shadow Raven has gone through. It's delirious with excitement. It's going to go through and, 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 and conquer Earth. And Cronin's gone through too. Oh, Emily, what have you done? Well, she's managed to get Sophie out of the cage. So that's something. But what about Earth? Oh, well, actually, it was the wrong amulet. She never brings the proper amulet. It's just a fake one. So nobody knows where the portal has actually sent them. So that's okay. They could be in some strange land. So they're breaking out through the side door. Oh, but Tufflin is here. And, okay, Emily's just wandered off. Oh, here she is. She's come back with some of the magic potion to make Tufflin good again. So he's not under the spell of the Goblin King. And now they can all go back into the forest and I don't know what they're going to do now because the Goblin King's been defeated. He's just basically gone through the portal to who knows where. So we might feed the man-eating plant his drumstick so it doesn't get hungry because I did feel a bit sorry for it. <laughs> it didn't get any food at all in this episode. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the build. It is such a good one and it's going to look great in my collection. Make sure you subscribe, click the little notification bell, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, all of the things you know I love for you to do and I'm going to see you with another video very, very soon.